Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Tata Communications Earnings Conference Call for Q4 FI24. We are joined today by our MD and CEO, Mr. Amu Lakshmi Narayanan, and our CFO, Mr. Kabir Ahmed Shakir, and our Head for Investor Relations, Mr. Rajiv Sharma. The result for the quarter ended 31st March 2024 have been announced yesterday afternoon, and the quarterly data pack is available on the website. I trust you would have had the chance to look at the key highlights. We will commence today's call with comments from Lakshmi, who will share his thoughts on the business and the long-term outlook, followed by Kabir, who will share his views on the financial progress achieved. At the end of the management's remarks, you will have an opportunity to get your queries addressed. Before we get started, I would like to remind everyone that some of the comments made or discussed on today's call may be forward-looking in nature and must be viewed in conjunction with the risk and uncertainties we face. A detailed statement and explanation of these risks are included in our annual filings, which you can locate on our website, www.tatacommunications.com. The company does not undertake to update these forward-looking statements publicly. With that, I would like to invite Lakshmi to share his views. Over to you, Lakshmi. Thank you, Shirag. Welcome to Q4 FI24 earnings call. FI24 has been a milestone year for the company as the overall revenue surpassed the 20,000 crore mark and the data revenues with 17,000 crore mark. I'm happy to share that our reported 4Q FI24 data revenues were up 26.9% QY on Y and grew to 21.9% on a full year basis. Incremental data revenues for this fiscal were at rupees 3,085 crores, of which core contributed 18.5% and digital 81.5%. Our fourth quarter FY24 EBITDA is up 2.1% year on year, and full year EBITDA was lower by 2%. Our full year EBITDA margins were at 20.2%, and fourth quarter FY24 EBITDA margins were at 18.6 percent. Our core EBITDA, excluding subsidiaries and the impact of acquisitions for the year, is at 23.7 percent, which is holding well within our ambition range of 23 to 25 percent. Coming to the margins and the dip that we see this year, there are five factors which have affected these. I've talked about these before. These are our organic investments, in people and platform, both in the markets as well as building the platform. Our m and related expenses this year, consolidation of the acquisitions which we are loss making, a drag from the subsidiaries, and the changing mix in the revenues with digital. Let me share that we have an improvement plan in place across all of these parameters that should see a positive trajectory on the margin side, as well as with our investments on the growth side. We remain confident about our doubling of data revenues by FI27, and we are aware that we need to grow 15 to 20% every year in order to make this happen. While I had called out that our reported data revenues grew by 21.9% on a full year basis, our underlying data revenue growth for the full year was at 8.8%, a tad lower than 10% in FI23, affected by the macro conditions. In this context, let me talk about our order book and funnel. While funnel continues to be robust, order book had been flattish for the past few quarters, and I'd called them out before. And there are two parts to this order book. One is the enterprise, which is a large focus of uh, the majority of the team members in the sales, and the OTT and the SP segments. Enterprise order book continues to be robust. Both India and international enterprise revenues have witnessed a positive growth momentum and grown double digit this year. Our India enterprise revenues grew by 12.6% and our international enterprise revenues grew by 10.5%. And some of the geographies showed more than 20% growth. However, the other part of the order book, which accrues from OTT and hyperscalers and the service providers, they have been lumpy in the last couple of quarters. An equally important aspect is with the CIS portfolio getting larger, a good part of our revenues are now usage revenues and they don't reflect in the order book. As such, two aspects that you need to take note of. First, that the business model is moving towards an element of usage and usage revenues will be cyclical in nature. I want to re-emphasize that Calera and Switch 
they are run as an integrated business with our CIS unit and switch with our media unit. And I mentioned before, they are all led by one leader each as an integrated business. Customer opportunities are being looked at holistically as opposed to looking at it from the individual product lens. Moreover, new business opportunities are being taken up by Calera as it is our go-to platform for our CIS ambitions going forward. And this started happening, even some of the Digo opportunities were done on Calera paper in the last uh, quarter as well. Incrementally, the health of the overall business will not be governed not just by the order book, but also be a combination of order book and usage. Coming to our digital portfolio performance, our Q4 digital portfolio revenue stood at rupees 2,082 crores, growing strongly at 71.6% year on year. For the full year, the digital portfolio grew by 55.4% on a reported basis and by 14.7% on an underlying basis. Our digital portfolio have grown at a two-year CAGR of 37%, and all parts of the portfolio have delivered with the next-gen connectivity growing at a CAGR of 30%, cloud and security growing at 21%, collaboration and customer interaction suite growing at 40%, Media at 64% over the last two years. Media excluding switch has grown at a CAGR of 21%. Our collaboration and CS portfolio, excluding Calera, has a two-year two CAGR of 5%. This is a complete reversal of a declining trend this business faced until 2022, FY22. A couple of thoughts on our medium-term aspirations. We remain confident about our data growth ambitions. As it continues to be driven by our expanded portfolio of capabilities, as well as our increasing customer relevance with this portfolio and increasing presence in the markets. Our acquisitions and organic capabilities have made our digital fabric even more relevant to enterprises today as we help them to solve challenges with their cloud strategies and simplifying their network transformations. There have been slowness in decision making which has hurt growth, but with our expanded portfolio, we are very well prepared to benefit as macro starts improving. Our medium-term structural drivers continue to be our India market leadership, our expanding scale in international markets, our increasing customer relevance, and our new pro product rollouts, including what we are planning, such as AI Cloud. One of the other growth catalysts for us has been the acquisition of new logos. And in FY24, the new logo revenues were up 90% year on year, albeit from a smaller base, testifying our increasing presence in the market and relevance across product domains. To summarize, we believe that our global digital fabric is a powerful concept which enterprises, especially in the international markets, are beginning to realize. With our network fabric, cloud fabric, customer interaction fabric, and IoT fabric, we are addressing a large number of problems that enterprises are faced with, and our digital fabric is coming out as a reliable, agile, and resilient solution for them. We are confident about a larger opportunity, and with a strong conviction, we will continue to improve and derive value of these investments and continuously augment our capabilities. With this, I'll request Kabir to share the financial highlights. Thank you, Lakshmi, uh, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, to begin with, as Lakshmi said, uh, FI24 has been an eventful year for us. Uh, the year we saw the fit to compete and fit to grow pillars of our financial strategy come to life. Our focus on driving profitable growth, strengthening our balance sheet, laid the foundation to enable us to complete three acquisitions in a single year while investing incrementally in our organic capabilities. Some of these inorganic and organic investments were solely on the back of internal cash accruals. We are encouraged by the early success we witness as the integration of Switch with our media business and Calera with Digo is progressing well and ahead of anticipated timelines. Our financial KPIs have departed because of the strategic actions we have taken. That said, their performance is in line with our expectations. As we harvest, harvest revenue and cost synergies from these investments, we will see these indicators come back to their ambition range over the medium term. FI24, as a historic year, we delivered the highest data growth, growth in our data portfolio, coming in at 21.9% and crossing the 17,000 crore mark for the first time ever. Our FI24 underlying data revenues grew by 8.8% on reported currency basis. The reported current uh, revenue numbers this year continue to have certain Forex benefits accruing from uh, centering dollars. Normalizing for this uh, Forex, our underlying data revenues grew by 6.6% year on year, and the positive impact on consolidated EBITDA 
margin is only 20 basis points. Our reported EBITDA came in at 20.2 this year on the back of investments in our organic and inorganic capabilities. Our core EBITDA, excluding subs and the impact of acquisition, for the full year is at 23.7%, which is well within our ambition range of 23.25. Our row C came in at 18.8%, driven by the impact of the rolling 12-month average of our EBIT performance, which has an element of dilution from our inorganic investments over the last six months and increased capital allocation for organic opportunities. The ROSI numbers will witness a further dilution over the next two quarters as a full impact of Calera gets baked in. Going forward, as we benefit from the synergies from our acquisitions and begin realizing operating leverage from our organic investments, our profitability will improve. On the KPIs, it is fair to say that the first improvement you will see is on leverage. And this quarter, there is a marginal improvement. This will be followed by improvement in ROSI and then later EBITDA margins. Our focus continues to be on creating elbow room and capacity for multi-year growth, as we have to be ready to participate in new opportunities, including AI cloud, multi-cloud connectivity, and cloud light. Now coming to our quarterly performance. Our consolidated revenue for the quarter stood at INR 5,692 crores, improving by 26.6% year on year and 1% on a sequential basis. Data revenue for the quarter stood at 4,656 crores, improving by 26.9% year on year and by about 0.8% on a quarterly basis. Our EBITDA margins for the quarter were at 18.6%. Our PAT margins for the quarter stood at 5.6%. We have provisioned for a deferred tax asset this quarter amounting to INR 186 crores on account of an assessed recoverability of the past tax losses as we redomiciled our international business from Bermuda to Switzerland. Our cash from operations for this year was INR 2,829 crores and FCF for the full year was at INR 747 crores. Net debt for the quarter stood at INR 9,126 crores and a debt to EBITDA is now at 2.16x. Cash capex for the quarter stood at 435 crores, though our approved capex is close to 1,131 crores, largely driven by our commitment to invest in new opportunities and technologies, underpinning our consistent growth on investing for growth. Moving to subsidiaries, TCTS revenue improved by 9.1% on a full year basis. Our payment business is now a 98% franchisee model, which has helped improving the business margins over the last couple of quarters. This quarter, the margins came in at 13.2% against 9.4% uh, last quarter. Our energies on a continuous basis are oriented towards driving the right capital allocation across the organization with an eye on return on every penny invested. With a robust capital gain governance framework in place, we are investing in the right opportunities to help us stay ahead of an ever disruptive technology curve. Our investments today are helping us participate in mega trends such as the AI cloud and enhanced collaboration experiences. At the same time, we are also optimizing resources through an ongoing strategic review of our business and subsidiaries. We are confident that these levers will sharpen our modes and help us improve our margin trajectory in the medium term and deliver the right value to our customers and shareholders. I will now ask Chirag to open the forum for Q&A. <clears throat> Thank you, Kabir and Lakshmi. We will wait for a minute for the queue to assemble. The first question is from the line of Sanjay Chen from ICICI Securities. Sanjesh, you have been requested to unmute. Please unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question.
Sanjesh, you have been requested to mute. Please go ahead and ask your question. We are unable to hear you. Kirag? Yeah. Can you hear me, please? You please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I think there was some technical problem. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Sanjesh. Go ahead, Sanjesh. I'm not sure if your connection is bad. We can't hear you. Why don't we take the next one and come back? The next question is from the line of Balaji Subramaniam from IFL Securities. Balaji, you have been requested to unmute. Please go ahead and ask your question. Am I audible? Yeah, Balaji, you're audible. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon and thanks for taking my question. My first one would be a bit on the housekeeping side. So if I look at the uh, EBITDA performance of uh, uh, Switch and Calera, there seems to be a 100 crore, 110 crore negative swing uh, quarter on quarter. Uh, so you know, could we, uh, could you share some light on you know what exactly uh, resulted in this? Is it some uh, kind of one-time uh, severance cost or one-time restructuring cost or something? And uh, how should one uh, look at it going forward? Uh, that would be my first question. On the second question is uh, more on the collaboration and uh, CPAS uh, portfolio. So you know one can see that uh, you, uh, on an organic basis, your uh, uh, revenue, quarterly revenue uh, in this uh, part of the business has been around, has been between 380 and 430 crores for the last few quarters. And uh, and you know uh, why is it you know kind of uh, stuck at that level? And the uh, other related question would be on uh, CPAS itself. So globally, if we look at uh, CPAS, uh, the revenue growth seems to be coming off, uh, be it uh, the likes of Twilio or uh, uh, be it the likes of Tanla and Root Mobile. Uh, so you know, what are the uh, new capabilities that you uh, think you know will become uh, key in terms of uh, driving growth growing for going forward? Thank you. Thank you. So, Balaji, I think maybe the first question, Kabir, do you want to take the EBITDA yeah, yeah. Uh, Let me then answer the first, uh, first question, Balaji. I think, uh, you know, it is both um, a combination of switch and Calera, you know, um, which is, you know, in resulted in the in the swing. But let me take Calera because that is uh, probably the uh, a, a significant portion, you know, of the swing that we talked about. Um, that is as a result of about three, four elements and none of them, let me state up front, is a cause for worry. Um, the first is, um, I think, once we start integrating Calera and you see a full four quarter go through, then I think the intimacy on understanding the seasonality of the business will be a lot better for, for all of us. Um, Q3 is, um, is indeed always a good quarter with a lot of festivals and a lot of activity, you know, happening for that kind of a business. So, so therefore, um, I would say um, the seasonality indeed has an impact on the, um, the uh, negative, sorry, the uh, net revenue margin. And that was one contributor in, in Q4 that it was lower than, than last quarter. Uh, the second, you know, contributor is um, is I would say as we are integrating, we are harmonizing, you know, our policies on on multiple things on on uh, accruals, on um, recognition of you know of costs, on PDD and expected credit loss. You know, all of those policies, you know, harmonization that we do in line with with Tata.com, which um, which is I would say the second you know reason you know for for that shift. Uh, Finally, um, I would say there have been some one-off um, legal expenses that we have um, we have provisioned for, um, and that is not uncommon in a large uh, U.S. Uh, listed you know public company takeover. Um, so, which has actually come through in you know in the second quarter. I would say these are the three you know large reasons. Uh, restructuring. Since you mentioned it, let me clarify. Um, there is a little bit of a restructuring there, but we have taken it below the line, you know, uh, as exceptional items, and it is not impacting the EBITDA numbers. I hope that that clarifies. Uh, let me take the next. On the uh, on the second part of the question, uh, you had two parts to the second question on the collaboration and CPAS. Um, you said the organic um, is stuck between a range. 
uh, and not growing. Um, one of the, uh, the the whole collaboration business itself has uh, multiple colors to it. It has got its uh, the traditional GSIP. We had uh, a Cisco powered solution. The other one was the uh, the Microsoft uh, team solution that we have, and we have newly launched another product called Jamby. So these are the these are the main ones. And there, uh, I think the uh, the uh, the GSIP revenue with the switch to uh, apps had seen a decline post-COVID and was continuing to decline. Uh, it got stabilized with uh, our introduction of the Global Rapid, which we combined all of these into a platform business and more into a, a fixed revenue business as opposed to dependent on usage, and that stabilized, but has not uh, has not grown well. So I think the uh, there are many factors, uh, but I think we are looking at um, you know, launching with Microsoft uh, a product in India, um, and we'll be a partner to launch that. So that will hopefully give some fillip to that business. Um, the other part is the collaboration in CPAS. We have reported last year the uh, the Digo, which we launched at um, you know, in percentage terms, grown very well. But this year, right from uh, the Calera acquisition, the Digo business teams and the Calera business team started working immediately upon close, and some of the um, uh, some of the deals in the pipeline that would have happened on Digo uh, has happened now on the Calera. So it's difficult to split the organic numbers uh, in that uh, in a sense. So these are some of the reasons. We are aware of the, the collaboration, the Global Rapid portfolio um, has had ups and downs, and we are in an ongoing process to revitalize uh, that portfolio. Uh, on the CPAS, your question and observation that uh, the growth is coming off with many global players, and you're right, I think the global players, um, you know, they publicly stated that uh, they want to focus more on profitability. I think the purely being on the SMS side was uh, a race to the bottom, and I think, uh, in in my view, there is some sense prevailed there to see uh, and bring focus back to uh, profitability. And in, in uh, and in that sense, many players have uh, have focused more on profitability than uh, than growth. Uh, the way we are looking at our uh, business is more as an interaction business, a combination of uh, SMS, uh, programmable voice, emails. Uh, multiple channels, and we are also building layers of software on top of these channels to bring more orchestration and intelligence uh, on that. So we will be continuing to invest to build these new capabilities. Um, it's our view that uh, enterprises, in the way they interact with consumers, are fragmented today across multiple channels, and we have an opportunity to position a more converged and intelligent. Um, platform that orchestrate across multiple channels. So that is where we will invest, and that is where we believe uh, will be uh, new opportunities, besides the channel expansions from SMS to WhatsApp and others. So we will focus on both dimensions, increasing the channels, um, and also increasing the platform flow. Uh, OK, I, ha I had a quick follow-up uh, uh, for Kabir. So uh, you you did call off some one-off legal expenses. So could you please quantify that? And also on the seasonality front, one can uh, see that at least at the gross revenue level that you have reported, uh, you know that uh, doesn't seem to be the case because there has been a uh, QOQ uh, growth. I do know that you know uh, part of it is because uh, the acquisition was consolidated uh, was consolidated maybe only for 85, 86 days a quarter, but at least you know the, on, at the revenue level. Uh, things you know uh, doesn't seem things don't seem to have uh, come off materially. Yeah, the legal um, expenses so far is uh, is uh, shy of a million dollars, which is what we have actually provisioned. You know, as of now, um, and all the other things. Um, you know, there's a lot that you need to lift under the hood to understand the revenue. So, uh, you know, NR mix uh, Balaji, so we may not be visible for you. Um, so it's it's quite visible. Yes, you are absolutely right. You know, it's a usage business. So 80, 85 days, you know, was was indeed, you know, one of the elements, you know, which get in there. But uh, but I would say when you uh, look at it, the NR mix, you know, um, is in, you know, indeed proving a, 
proving an element that's um, that's also a sizable portion of it. Thank you, uh, Kabir and Lakshmi. All the best. Thank you. Balaji. Thank you, Balaji. The next question is from the line of Mr. Mayur Magar from Aegon Life. Mayur, you have been requested to unmute. Please go ahead and ask your question. I think uh, Mayur is uh, unable to join the queue. Uh, the next question is on line of Sanjay Chen from ICC Securities. Sanjay, you have been requested to unmute. Please unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question. Sanjay, please go ahead. Sanjay, we still see a technical issue at your end. You the want to next... disconnect and log back again, Sanjay? The next question is from like Mr. Vibhor Singhal from Nuvama Wealth. Vibhor, you have been requested to unmute yourself. Please go ahead and ask your question. I hope I'm audible. Yeah, Vibhor, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, a uh, couple of questions, uh, one on the growth part and uh, one on the finance part for Kabir. Uh, so, Lakshmi, on the growth part, just wanted to pick your brain on two things. Uh, how do you see the cloud business uh, shaping up? Uh, I think this year was uh, not a great year, not just for us, I think, but uh, mostly the uh, the overall uh, the uh, IT services vendors as well uh, in terms of cloud adoption and deals also kind of going slow on the uh, macro front. So how do you see that pay playing out in FI25? Uh, Any uh, green shoots in pockets where you could uh, probably highlight or what is your outlook for that segment, let's say in this year? Uh, secondly, on the uh, CPaaS side, uh, just wanted to understand, I think uh, uh, the, uh, uh, I mean, post COVID, of course, uh, during COVID, of course, we saw a great pick, uh, a very sharp pickup in this industry, in this industry overall for all the players, uh, which has kind of died down right now. What is the pricing environment in this domain? Like, uh, uh, is there still cutthroat competition, which is continuously creating a pre pressure on the pricing in this segment? Or as you mentioned that more, as more and more players are focusing on profitability, is there any scope of stabilization of prices or maybe an uptick uh, because of new uh, platforms coming in? Uh, if you can answer these two questions, I'll probably have a couple of uh, follow-ups for Kabir. Thank you, Igor. On the on the cloud side, uh, you know we are largely focused in India, <clears throat> uh, while we do have some uh, customers that we serve internationally. On the you know our view of the cloud is um, the uh, the cloud adoption today. <laughs> Uh, is not complete. I think there are many still on-prem um, uh, users that are, uh, and we are trying to position our cloud as a, a purpose-built cloud that is multi-tenanted, uh, which has the flexibility and offers all the benefits of a private cloud to the, to the customers. Um, and we, we say that over a three-year period, our TCO would be much better than any public cloud player. Uh, it's been, you know, we, we've uh, it's achieved a reasonable scale uh, where we are operating fairly national uh, mission critical applications on our cloud. Uh, so it's proven its base, uh, the technology and our engineering capabilities and services. What we are doing to uh, sort of boost the growth uh, one is the macro that you called out um, uh, that is there, but from our side, we are preparing to uh, strengthen our uh, industry cloud uh, where we have a, a, a government community cloud. Uh, we have a, a financial services cloud, which is compliant with RBI. So we are strengthening these, uh, these areas. Uh, and similarly, our Kubernetes and analytics cloud uh, capability and the storage capability. So these are all the things that we are investing and strengthening uh, and repurposing the teams in, uh, in in a way that they can take this to market more effectively. So we're going, we are we are using this period where there has been slowness to uh, organize ourselves and preparing for the future. Uh, but. Uh, the potential is still large because uh, not everyone has moved to the cloud. 
The second aspect of this is, you know, some of the workloads that cannot move to the cloud for various reasons because they need to be on-prem, because they don't want to incur a large amount of um, network backhauling costs and the latency associated with taking to some someplace and bringing it back, or uh, you know they cannot afford a, a failure uh, in an application not being able to be accessed because there is a network failure or a failure on the cloud side. They are keeping all of them on prem. So the classic cases in point are manufacturing, for example, some of the manufacturing execution systems. Uh, many people have it on prem. Uh, some of the store systems are on prem. So there we are launching our edge product um, you know, to, to make sure that you know, these workloads can operate at the edge. So that is something that we are preparing ourselves. Uh, we've already launched it in our media business and we'll be launching it for other segments um, uh, soon. Many customers are in the, in the early stage one um, usage of these products. With us. So that is how we are preparing ourselves for the, the upcoming cloud wave. And of course the AI cloud will be another um, game changer uh, on its own. So this is how we are preparing our business for cloud and edge. On the question of CPaaS, um, um, you're right. I think there are. I did. I didn't mention. I think people are. You know, uh, it's public information that uh, some of the major players announced that they wanted to focus on margins. Uh, internationally, we are seeing that play out, um, but um, you know, India market is, as you say, uh, is still. I think you use the word cutthroat, and I you know you wouldn't be too far uh, incorrect with that statement. Um, so our you know um, our positioning in this needs to be, as I called out, you know, to expand to channels other than SMS, and vertically expand to uh, from software layers above the channels to bring more orchestration, to bring more intelligence to interactions. Got it. Uh, that was really helpful. Just a quick follow up on the cloud uh, uh, question that I had. So typically we have seen that in any of these technology uh, adoptions, be it cloud or analytics or uh, uh, basically RIMS before that, uh, Indian enterprises tend to basically adopt a new technology with a lag of at least two to three years. Uh, it's historically been the case. Uh, it does, do we see that playing out in in the, in the case of cloud as well? Uh, are the Indian enterprise uh, at least I mean at some years behind the, their global counterparts in terms of cloud adoption, or let's say in terms of moving to public cloud vis-a-vis -vis the private cloud uh, that they are uh, kind of focusing at this point of time? Um, I haven't seen the data, but the data clearly is yes, there has been a lag, um, but uh, in a way. Uh, that lag is good as well because internationally what we are seeing people who move to public cloud are not are now um, having second thoughts because the costs of public cloud have gone up um, it is easy to get in but um, and there are other costs that hit them as they grow um, so I think that should be an opportunity right. for us to address that properly in the India market Go. Sounds good. Thanks, Lucky. Thanks, Lakshmi. Thanks for answering my questions. Kabi, just a quick two questions. Uh, one is you mentioned that the cost, the legal expense cost uh, that has been provisioned up till now is around $1 million yet. So are there any more expenses that we are expecting uh, in the coming quarters or are we done uh, with most of them? And secondly, last quarter we spoke about uh, uh, basically uh, getting our interest cost down by refinancing of some of the bonds or expensive debt that we have on our balance sheet. Uh, any progress on that or uh, if you could give maybe some kind of a timeline uh, when we are looking to maybe uh, uh, execute that uh, two things i mean look legal i can only tell you what i know i mean if something comes up you know i hope it doesn't but if something comes up in future then it comes up uh, so sure. i can speculate that uh, for now uh, Vibor. so these are i mean all of them are in public domain i mean there's nothing that which is not privy to all you guys um, I'm sure you searched out. You'll you'll know what are the things that are there uh, from Calera, whether it's the warrant holders or you know or otherwise, which are uh, which are in there, which we need to defend, which we will. Yeah. Um, on um, you know on the refinancing uh, part, yes, we will be doing it. Um, it will be imminent, you know, anytime soon. And once that is there to be you know declared, we will you know come out. So we are looking at uh, we've already, I mean, um, uh, signed or rather, you know, um, with 
the consortium bankers in terms of when we will do and we will execute in the next couple of weeks uh, uh, and when that time is there to to announce we will we will announce that um, you know as well and you are absolutely right it will be refinanced uh, you know at a rate which is um, which will be you know more uh, attractive than what we did the lines of credit um, when the 200 million refinancing we had to do for the bond repayments that we did in end of november for the uh, Kalera bond holders. Got it, got it. Uh, that's great to hear. Just last thing, uh, I, I'm assuming the guidances for FI27 in terms of doubling our data revenue, margins, ROC and leverage, they all remain intact. Absolutely, they all remain intact. As I mentioned in my speech, uh, we will get the debt to the, the, the leverage ratio much faster. In fact, we made a marginal improvement. Last quarter was 2.2x, 2.21. 2 this quarter is 2.16x. I mean, in FI25, it will come under 2x. So that's not an issue. Rossi, um, it's not it bottomed out because it's a 12-month trailing. That's the formula. Uh, so you will have two more quarters where you will see a little bit of a deterioration in Rossi, and then it will start coming up. So that will happen the following year. And, uh, and EBITDA will be the last one to come back to the range of 23-25. Completely committed on all three uh, parameters as it stands today. And the growth as well, doubling of data revenues. I'm 101 percent, yes. That's the main and the most important one. Completely committed. You know, Lakshmi made it very, very clear. Uh, we remain confident of the opportunity we have. We remain committed to doubling our data business. Got it, got it. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, guys, and wish you all the best. Thank you, Vibor. Thanks, Vibor. The next question is from Sanjay Jain from IC Securities. Sanjay, you have been requested to unmute. Please unmute yourself. Go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, Sanjish, please go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, Sanjish. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, taking my question. I got few of them. Uh, Lakshmi, first on the digital piece as itself, it appears that the entire uh, segment have significantly slowed down and now we are at a 5% YOY growth. Uh, uh, two quarter back, we were at 24% growth. Uh, there's a material shift in the growth rate, what we were looking at. And we were hoping for an acceleration with a solid uh, funnel and the order book we have today. So how does it look for FI25? Where, where do you think FI25, we will land up with whatever order book funnel we have today? Are we confident of delivering a 20% plus growth uh, next year with, uh, with the order book and funnel and the visibility we have today on, uh, on this business? Yeah, um, so Sanjeeshan, the digital, I have been calling out on the order book. I, we, we have said that our funnel is good, but the order booking is slow. Uh, and that is what I had called out, and I'm still in my commentary. There is slowness in decision making. The only, uh, only thing that I would contrast it uh, with saying that in our enterprise side of the business, uh, we grew close to 13% in India and uh, a good double digit in international markets. Despite the, the, the conditions of micro conditions uh, that the enterprise business in the international markets face. On the uh, on going forward basis, I think uh, there are a few things that we have to keep in mind. You know, it's not as though the macro conditions are suddenly uh, improved. Uh, if anything, in the U.S., uh, you know, with uh, inflation and the possibility of uh, interest rates not coming down, there is going to be more caution and the other geopolitical Middle East conflicts that are there. So the caution is going to be in the air, so I think there is no doubt. Um, I wonder the bigger picture that I see in all my interactions with the customer is are we, um, you know, the proposition that we are making to customers is that appealing to customers? Are we now able to engage at senior levels with customers and receive the attraction of the platform? I think clearly yes. Um, our awareness in the international markets is still very low, um, and we have to increase that awareness. And with the increasing footprint of sales we have, that alone is not enough. Uh, I think we need a lot more. 
our participation levels will increase as the macro conditions. So, um, you know, that's the and, and the opportunity for us is the need still there for customers to transform the network. Are we still relevant in that space? You know, we are very relevant, especially with our new product of cloud networking. So there is even more relevance. Our and, and to cloud of thirty percent this year. Okay. Uh, that's fair. That's fair, Lakshmi. Uh, just, just uh, stripping out digital a little bit more. Within the four sub segment, where where are you more confident? Uh, is that next gen connectivity? Are we more confident or cloud hosting and security? Because these are the two lines, uh, as you articulate, looks to be much more on the stronger uh, footing than the remaining two. Will that understanding be fair? Yeah, I think next gen connectivity clearly, you know, we we have seen the growth, and even there, as you called out, the momentum of growth in the last two quarters had come down. The characteristics of next gen connectivity is uh, the 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 time period from order booking to turn up of the revenue is a bit longer because you know we have to implement the network, uh, implementing us you know SD WAN across multiple sites do take time. So the time taken, but you know if you ask, you know that's a large portfolio and uh, that. Growing will help us to shift the needle. So we are clearly focused there. The cloud and security is also large, but you know the cloud is largely in India. Security is a mixture of India and international. And we are doubling our focus in the international markets by taking some of our cloud SOC opportunities there. So that is uh, a critical opportunity. The third is the interaction fabric because we have invested in Calera. Uh, we see a lot of excitement from customers uh, because Calera has a powerful platform. And combined with the, the brand of Tata.com, uh, there is a lot more confidence in using the platform. So we see a lot of opportunity with customers. And as I said, we are going to be further investing in the platform. Besides realizing all the cost synergies that we see, we further invest in the platform to build out the software layers for orchestration and intelligence. Uh, so that uh, is our third. The fourth is IoT fabric, um, and suggest there, you know, they are, you know, uh, we have to start to I don't want to, um, I don't want to call out any particular topic to say, you know, they could be focusing more and less there. All four uh, are uh, equally focused. They are run by separate teams, and we are allocating. Uh, Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, I think I think there is some gap in between. There were blanks, but I I, I got the broader message. Uh, the, the next question on the India business, uh, Lakshmi, that looks like uh, uh, has uh, significantly deteriorated or decelerated uh, to five odd percent kind of a growth. Uh, I hear that there is an increased competitive intensity in the Indian market. Uh, uh, do you believe next year could be a fierce competitive year and India market may struggle to grow? Will, do you see that scenario panning out? I have followed India. We have grown uh, thirteen percent. So I don't know where revenue into enterprise market. The enterprise. Uh, so, so 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 the thirteen percent is only for the enterprise, Lakshmi. I guess uh, overall India piece has grown only five point eight percent by over. Yeah, so that's why I did call out the the service provider and the OTT segment uh, there. With, uh, in the OTT segment, we put large uh, hyperscalers and others into that segment, uh, Sandesh. Um, and there, I think the uh, the context is uh, these people had invested in a lot of capacity uh, during COVID and post COVID, and there was some moderation, uh, and it should pick up again with. Uh, them investing in more data centers, it should come back up again. So I think that's more a, a cyclical nature. Um, but you know, the, the focus on enterprise is uh, is the topmost focus, and and we are very happy with uh, the thirteen percent growth. I think we can do more with our expanded portfolio, and we'll be pushing for uh, accelerating that uh, further. Got it. 
got it got it i got one couple of questions sorry for you i'm pulling it a little bit more but on kalera and switch what has been our yoi growth uh, for us because we don't have a comparable number for last year uh, can you help us understand how have we been growing on those both businesses um you know uh, sanjesh let me chip in here you know although we we call out underlying you know data revenue at 8.8% and and including acquisitions so much um if i have to be honest you know about it and this uh, lakshmi alluded in his qualitative you know description we are running this business as an integrated business so let's say kalera right um uh, we are stripping out you know all of kalera's you know numbers as acquisition and reporting the balance as underlying which is little unfair why because we had a digo funnel uh, which before the acquisition and now we are looking at which is the best way you know to serve our customer and in majority of the cases we are going as lakshmi has pointed out we are going with a kalera paper right uh, we are Correct. selling that product so and and the same with switch as well right we are going in a in a combined way together and even from an org structure point of view we have one common leader for these businesses who are looking at these products as one integrated offering you know to the customer so after a point in time we like splitting hair you know to then say you know what will be separately this growth without that and and uh, and stuff like that i mean i'm still reporting it for better governance and transparency to the street because one of them you know came to us with money having been paid to acquire that capability um for so 12 months we will have that and up you know, hopefully um switch you know that that problem will stop in in may it will have completed the 12 months and we will get on to a completely regular you know way of reporting growth and it will take six more months uh, for kalera um and in q3 of uh, fi25 onwards then you will see all that completely normalized so so it's a little difficult you know for us to peel that out uh, no i got 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 it kabir my my only intention of asking that question was to understand with kalera in place uh, because that's a heavy portfolio will will the 20% growth become a difficult uh, if kalera doesn't grow by 20% life is not easy sanjesh we are we will uh, yeah. <laughs> no no because we are just hearing that globally this epas business has yeah, been good <clears throat> So I think the you know, so the market. See, we can only look at keep an eye on the future. <clears throat> My belief is that the you know the B two C players, their interactions with the consumers, are not going to decrease. There is going to be more channel diversity. That is what is going to happen. SMS will decrease today. Ninety nine percent of the interactions or ninety five percent of the interactions are all on on SMS channels. that will diversify into other channels and as i said you know we we will uh, we have already diversified into other channels we will further diversify with uh, other capabilities uh, there and we have to build out the stack on top uh, which is where more value added offerings will be there for customers and that will also help us to deliver better margins in the platform so that is what we need to do uh, so in the in the long run um, you know i don't believe uh the interactions with consumers are going to be reduced in any form or shape it's only going to be increasing only the channel diversity is going to happen no fair in a fair just one last question from my side uh we are today at 18.6% margin uh, the ambition is to be in 23 to 25 range can you help us understand the bridge what is going to drive or what are the levers for the margin we are looking Uh, because the mix is only going to deteriorate towards more digital in terms of margin profile uh, i understand roc profile will improve but uh, what are the levers are we looking where we already have few tracks on the margin i will take that uh, sanjesh uh, sanjesh we are confident we will get back to the 23 25 um, multiple moving parts um, within that uh, first and you know foremost um, you should see uh, a a good improvement in fi25 itself so this is all not back ended to fi27 so we will see that already you know next year you know a, a little bit of an improvement as lakshmi talk uh, called out um we did spend money on m&d not just the impact of the acquisitions but also cost that was actually spent on 
due diligence and you know fees and stuff like that so those those elements will come off which will not going to be there uh, second um, we are obviously spent a lot of money in terms of our organic you know investments in the 013 uh, stage um, those should give me operating leverage you know as well and that should come back because i'm not going to continue to spend money on them you know i will be looking for growth and revenue you know coming in from there so the so the nr margin should directly flow into you know into lop into into ebitda uh, so okay. that's i would say the second lever and the third one is um, you've seen you know we've you know done um some strategic review took a call uh, a hard call on on one of our subsidiaries tcts on getting out of a onrest contract uh, our tcpsl business is you know is is doing well already we you know uh, moved the profitability needle up you know significantly likewise there are other elements also which we will you know be more sharper focus there and uh, and sweat it out um, so i would say multiple such levers that we will you know uh, play into the picture and and, and bring that uh, entire thing got it do you see net profit margin improving or you think uh, it will be below the net profit uh, the leverage will be more for us sorry you when you say net net margin net, or you mean net, net net revenue margin see net revenue margin you know your that's your, your point is right net revenue margin will have the dilutive impact of uh, of the change in mix as we drive digital portfolio harder right because they come at a lower net revenue margin compared to the core connectivity business so there there's going to be headwind uh, and um, and the way in which we are managing is that inter tower inter business headwinds you know the businesses themselves need to take care of inter company you know within the company level what headwind is there is what should get offset by the operating you know leverage uh, but but as we mentioned earlier as well we have a glide path for each of them now the glide path is whether it is organic operating leverage or whether it is cost synergies coming in from the m and a or revenue synergies then flowing in you know into margin you know i think all of those levers are there by product category and we have even broken it down you know to a more granular level by drivers as well and that is what you know the governance that we follow to get them to the destination much fair enough that's that, that that's great uh, thanks for answering all my questions uh, uh, best of luck for the coming quarters thank you sanjesh thank you sanjesh thank you is from the line of mayank babla from inam amc mayank you have been requested to unmute yourself please go ahead and ask your question yeah hi am i audible yes ma'am please go ahead yeah thank you for taking my question uh, sir a while back you had announced uh, that you know tata coms a uh, partnership with nvidia uh, i was wondering if you could give us some uh, detail about this partnership you know the nature of it and the scope or potential it has for us thank you um i won't be able to give a lot of details at this stage uh, mayank what we are doing is uh, you know there is a, a solid partnership that is emerging um, we are working very closely on um, the uh, the various aspects of the architecture and the build out uh, and we will be preparing ourselves for uh, a launch um, during this year um, and and there is a lot of good interactions that happen in terms of you know uh, the use cases and 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 very many things so it, it, as far as our ambition is concerned for ai cloud uh, we believe uh, you know ai has a huge potential um, and uh, in india particularly with uh, the launch of our ai cloud we will be able to uh, help Uh, and move the needle for you know, the government has announced uh, you know a huge commitment to use ai as well um, a lot of startups and enterprises uh, they have to go through the maturity curve or from the from the hype that is there today to actual uh, use cases and um, and training with the data get more data discipline and make use of all of these so there is a there is a big potential and we think that even the ai cloud even though it will be built Uh, in india and launched in india there is a potential for even international customers to use this uh, in due course so we are quite excited about the opportunity um, 
and we are working very diligently in uh, in going through all the details, making sure the launch is successful. Sure, sure. Thank you so much, and best of luck. Thank you. Thanks, man. The next question is from the line of Mr. Gautam Brati from Chanakya Wealth. Gautam, you have been requested to unmute yourself. Please go ahead and ask the question. Shet Rati uh, from Chanakya. Uh, just uh, Lakshmi, uh, just, I think I I missed the number, but you said that you added uh, the number of new logos. You added, uh, you gave a percentage. Could you just 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 uh, help us understand that? Did the number was something like ninety yeah, percent? Uh, correct. I know I talked about uh, the the revenue growth in new logos um, is a ninety percent. Now there are there are a few things we have done. You know from uh, the sales teams. Uh, we have brought about uh, a team that focuses purely on going after the new logo, and that has helped us uh, in a way. And that focus helped us in in acquiring new logo. And secondly, is the quality of the new logo that we get as well, in terms of uh, what revenues we get. Um, so that's been a change that we did last year in terms of how our sales teams uh, got organized. Uh, and that is what I was reporting as, uh, and and I think the one thing we have to keep in mind is, uh, you know, it's starting off from a fairly low base, uh, but it's uh, delivered good results as a result of the focus uh, that our sales team has brought about in new logos. And, and Lakshmi, if I if I understand it right, what you're basically telling us is that uh, the the more structural part of the business, which is uh, which is your enterprise uh, business is seeing decent traction and is growing well though you would want it to go faster uh, but uh, it is the more cyclical part of the business which is kind of right now uh, uh, a bit more impacted is that is that understanding right and how and historically when you've seen you must have seen many of these cycles uh, how how much time does it take for it to come back and and can it come back pretty strongly whenever it does when yeah. the cycle is correct yeah, I think your observation is uh, your observation is very spot on. I think the enterprise uh, business, both in India and internationally, uh, is is quite good. And as you called out, it's not as uh, uh, as fast as we would like it to be, but it's still seen good growth. Um, the you no know, the the growth got pulled down largely from our OTT and uh, the uh, service provider segment. Um, I wouldn't call them cyclical, um, but what has happened, especially with the OTT segment, is uh, as I as I mentioned earlier, um, uh, I think there was a lot of capacity that they had built, and also last year they focused more on their build out of uh, data centers and others, um, and, uh, and therefore the, the the growth on the on the network side didn't happen for us as much as uh, the previous years. Um, so, and also the OTT business in some parts, we also had the, you know, the, the messaging business, which had some simplicity. Um, the other part to the question is also, uh, if, if you look at our portfolio, the next gen connectivity uh, had very good growth. The cloud and security also had double digit, even though uh, it's not as much as in the past. Um, the collaboration, um, as was observed earlier, is uh, has been static, and there are many moving parts in there. We sort of revitalized that portfolio with a very combined global rapid, which is uh, a GSIP, a Cisco, and a Microsoft. There are moving parts in that business uh, that happens, uh, and we were prepared for that business to be of a, of a, of a lower growth which is why we started investing in Digo at that time. Um, and, and therefore we'll focus more on the customer interaction side. On the global rapid side, we believe uh, the growth will come back. Uh, we've also invested in and launched on a product called Jambi. They're all in very early stages, uh, so they should come back. So, you know, each of these portfolio has a, a different rhythm uh, within our company. Uh, some of them are affected by the macro as well. So it's a combination of factors uh, but as I called out, uh, the the four um, fabrics in the company, we will continue to invest in all the four fabrics. Uh, the big chunk of focus needs to be in the international market, which is where um, there is a lot more of uh, headroom for growth purely by the size of the market. Uh, but the international markets also have strong incumbents, 
and we are looking to replace the incumbents through the power of the offer that we have uh, and the capabilities that we bring to the table. And we are seeing that steadily happen. Um, clearly with our brand, uh, as I said, the awareness levels are very low. I mean, interestingly, in one of the products we did a test uh, and the awareness levels are low. Uh, and I think we need to improve our awareness levels. Our, despite our investments uh, to increase the sales headcount and the strength there, uh, it's nowhere uh, sufficient to, uh, to, um, uh, to reach the full aspirational potential. Um, and therefore, uh, we will be increasing our marketing spend. We will have to continue to spend on uh, the sales and increasing the capacity of the sales and gearing our teams to do more larger deals, which means that um, they do take time to, uh, uh, to shape, they do take time to close. Um, so we will have to get used to all of these cycles, but the opportunities uh, are there. Sure. And, and Lakshmi, you know, just wanted to understand, like, you know, uh, like some of the deals, is it possible that there are certain deals that have been won which are because of the, the the slowness in the market are taking time to scale up or, or, or are there certain, uh, you know, is there certain pressure on the usage side? I'm just trying to understand, you know, uh, see, there are two ways that the revenue comes back, right? One way is, is you win new deals and they will show up in the subsequent quarters eventually, right? And the other thing is there are certain parts of it, you know, we are lapping certain quarters where certain parts of the portfolio started slowing down a couple of quarters back and and you know once they come into the base the the base impact will come out of it or the third is you know that you know uh, that the usage or certain deals start scaling up so i'm just trying to understand if you could give some sort of color as to how how should we think about how should we think about it uh, the the drivers of growth for for maybe specifically fy25 yeah, so FI25, you know, largely the focus uh, and the drivers of growth would be the, um, you know, the, the next-gen connectivity, whatever we uh, booked the orders last year, as we start to deliver, the revenues will come. Awesome. Uh, so hopefully, you know, the uh, order booking will improve as the conditions improve because uh, parts of the what we book in year gets realized in the year itself, especially if the order booking happens in Q1 and Q2. So we are hoping that conditions will improve and we can do that. Uh, in the uh, usage side of the business, uh, um, you know, the, it's more about, um, you know, acquiring new logos, um, going to the existing logos to diversify the channels beyond SMS. Uh, and we are seeing, as I said, you know, with uh, with Calera particularly, with Calera and Tadacom now working together, uh, the leadership is in place and uh, the, the notions of how we take it to market is falling into place. So with that, uh, we will um, uh, see some acceleration. We are acquiring customers, but it is also a factor of how these customers um, actually ramp up and put their traffic through our platform. So there are a couple of uh, dependencies to it, but we'll have to work through those uh, um, uh, through those factors. Uh, I think there, there was a question on the cloud. I did mention, you know, there was a, you know, as everybody else, we also, you know, saw uh, a slowing down, but we were still at uh, a good double digit on the on the cloud and security portfolio. Um, and as things improve, we believe uh, that should uh, that should accelerate. So. Um, you know, the, the way that is how I would see uh, how it will shape up. Um, and I did say that the, the order booking um, had slowed down, which will have an impact. Uh, but we also have, uh, you know, a lot of uh, organic business growth possible in the usage side from Calera, uh, the switch integration, which brings the occasional use. Uh, the number of events that we do in the media is increasing and that should uh, that should help us as well. So different portfolios will have different cycles um, and we are monitoring. Um, how it pans out immediately in the quarter or, uh, or something is difficult to say. But as I said, you know, we are very cognizant of the fact that uh, you know, we need to deliver at least a 15 um, to 20 percent growth in order to realize our ambition that we stated out and we are very, very focused on delivering on that ambition. 
No, I think I think which is very fair the question, and I think to some extent, I, if I understand it right, you're saying that uh, in a quarter or two you don't know, but for the full year there are enough and more levers for you to kind of uh, deliver the fifteen to twenty percent growth despite the 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 slowness in the uh, macro and the uh, the last couple of quarters that we've seen. Uh, you 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 feel that that is is a doable task uh, from what you what you see today. Right. Uh, how it pans out eventually, it's it's a different matter. But that is, we just wanted to understand from where we are in terms of in terms of orders which we booked and and the slowness that you've seen. Uh, is it is it? So is, sure, is sure, you, uh, you know, if your question is, do I have a hundred percent visibility to deliver what what I'm saying? The answer is no. I mean, if it was there, then you know, I'll probably be on vacation tomorrow onwards. Right. So, you no, know, that's not the case. Uh, we have to still a lot of work to be done. Uh, in order to, because in your order booking is as important as the orders booked last year. Some of these conversions do take time. Um, you know, all I'm saying is from a qualitative per, uh, perspective, um, you know, we would, the kind of conversations, I just had a trip to the UK last week. The conversations have been very good. Uh, the customers still want to engage. You know, I was just telling, and one of the customers did tell us, that changing the network is, uh, you know, is touching live wire. You know, there are applications are running today, and changing anything, they have to do it very cautiously, right? So, uh, it's not like in the application world where I can build a new application and uh, and put a new application. So this is uh, somewhat different. So you know, we understand the the mechanics the customers uh, go through, uh, but all I'm calling out is the opportunity exists. Um, you know, obviously, we have to get into the consideration set, which we are now increasingly getting into, and then we have to win and can close it. Um, the confidence level of the growth comes from the fact that uh, the inorganic acquisitions will start to play. Uh, this year, at least, we will see the benefit of those uh, coming through. And that is why I'm saying that this year is critical for us to ensure that these um, uh, the go-to-market motions of both Switch and Calera uh, we get it right, um, and we bring uh, the full year benefit of the acquisitions to play. And organically, uh, you know, we should go to more enterprise customers to uh, to pitch ourselves in the in the international market. So, um, so those are the the colors that I can give you uh, in how we are seeing the the picture. That's very fair. Just two more questions. One is on the the IoT stroke uh, move portfolio, right? Uh, uh, you know, it, it's a portfolio, you know, there was a JLR announcement also that you put out, the, the partnership getting more stronger out there, and, you know, uh, uh, and, and autos have started to do well. So that's that's one portfolio. How should we think about it, you know, given that you had an early leadership in that platform? Uh, it's It's been, it's uh, at least optically, it looks like a, a fairly disappointing year in that uh, in that portfolio there. Uh, any any light on that portfolio, particularly the IoT Move portfolio? Yeah, I think the you know if in the in the whole I think we club it all into incubation and and give the numbers to you there. There are a Move by itself has uh, delivered a double digit growth, uh, but nowhere near uh, the expectations uh, we ourselves have of that business. Right, so we have to do a lot more. I think the key levers for that uh, business is to strengthen our uh, position in the auto OEM world. Um, you know, we have one, a few in India, uh, but in the international markets, we need to expand beyond JLR. So that is very critical for us to achieve. Um, the other ones in the, in helping the MBNOs to launch uh, and the airlines, you know, they are sort of um, going on as normal. So, uh, but the big needle shift will come from the uh, from the OEM business, which is what we'll need to work towards. The second aspect of the the, the, the portfolio is about the IoT business. Um, I think the IoT business, we had a big fill up as a result of uh, a major uh, deal in the international market last year. Um, and uh, the replication of that is what we need to work on for that business to uh, to grow. We are also expanding the capability there with a lot of video analytics combined with our edge. That's a new product that we are taking to market. So I think that is still in the in the early phases of, shall I say, you know, uh, getting the offerings right um, and pivoting the business from one to another, right? So that is what we are doing in that business. 
uh, and we will keep a very close watch uh, on that to see how we how we deliver the growth. Well, then the last question is is on the balance sheet side. We see we see a big uh, increase in the the uh, current liabilities line item. Uh, some of it could be explained, I think, by by a big increase in current taxes, and there seem to be some other current liabilities which have increased. Uh, Kavir, can you just help us understand uh, what this could be? How should we think about this? Uh, three, four elements, Nishit. Um, one, I mean, the absolute increase is also because of the impact of acquisitions. Uh, so when they came in, you just add them together. About rather 250-odd crores is, um, is just on account of the impact of acquisitions. Um, if I take that aside and then look at BIU business, I think there are three components uh, to it vis-a-vis uh, -vis last year. Um, the first one is we are in a continuous mode in terms of balance sheet cleanup. So past balances on vendor records and stuff like that, which we cleaned up. So therefore, that um, you know um, cleanup you know has removed, of course, the credit. But from a working capital point of view, it has the opposite effect. Um, we've had some uh, increase in prepaid expenses that are all growth related. Uh, they are deal specific, you know, but uh, that's another chunky, you know, item that we had. Uh, so those are, you know, um, you know, two uh, uh, two big elements from a you know a PAU perspective. Um, and um, you know, um, yeah, I would say you know those are the ones which are which are impacting you know our our working capital numbers. I mean, sorry, the last one was. Uh, we did create um, this new entity, um, Nova Mesh, which you are aware of. Um, as yeah. we actually transition it, um, you know, we had put a pause to to the billing and the collections of it in in March um, until we get the new GST registrations and you know and all of that, you know, uh, as well. So, it, it, does that mean that some of the revenues in the month of March are unveiled uh, and, and stand in in unearned revenues in in the in your revenue. Yeah, that's that's correct. And also, there is a reclassification of long term borrowings, uh, you know, to short term when you uh, when you see the you know um, the the period. The moment it's um, less than one year, they get reclassified as well. That's very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nishit. Thank you, Gautam. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, we will uh, proceed towards closing the call. Before we close the call, I would request Lakshmi to share his closing comments. Yeah, thank you all. Uh, um, I think we, uh, I mentioned there are critical things that we need to do for the year ahead. Um, our number one focus is to make sure that the, uh, the switch in parallel acquisitions are uh, well integrated in the business. Uh, the process is, uh, you know, very strongly on, um, and uh, in the in the, the portfolios of network fabric and cloud and edge, um, and the interaction fabric and the uh, IoT fabric, you know, we're going to keep a sharp focus to make sure that they can deliver. Um, I think we called out on all the levers available for us uh, for the growth in the margins, uh, and we will look forward to. Um, executing on those levers. I think the, uh, the, the biggest excitement for me is uh, as we talk to the customers, um, the ability to engage at senior levels and increasing relevance of Tata.com's portfolio to them is the most encouraging sign for us. And we'll have to capitalize on that to uh, get into their consideration set and participate in opportunities and then win those deals. So I think those are the factors that I would be focusing on. Thank you, Lakshmi. Thank you, Kabir. This brings us to the end of the management call. In case of any queries, please write to investor.relations at tatacommunications.com. The recording will be available on the website in the next 24 hours. You may please disconnect now. Thank you.